Alright guys, so we're back with another video, and before I continue, I want to actually make our code a little bit more modular, because right now we have everything in just one file, but that's not the way that I want to tackle this, and I might as well show you guys how we can make our code more modular, but what we're going to do is we're going to have something very simple. So, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new folder, and I'm going to call it the source folder, and what I'll do is I'm just going to simply create a couple of classes. So, we're going to create a WS folder for WebSocket. We're going to create a folder for constants and then we're going to create a folder for, I guess, clients or uh, whatever, whatever else we will need. And the WS folder is just going to have our WebSocket manager. So this is just going to be a class and it's not going to be anything crazy. It's literally just going to be the same thing that we had in the main file. But instead, we're making it more modular and we're encapsulating all of our functions, all of our properties in their own class. The reason why we want to do this is, again, like I said, you don't want to put everything in one file because let's say, for example, if you want to perform some subroutine or some task again and you've written that code already, if you put in a function, you can just easily recall that function over and over again okay so what we'll do is we'll just import the connect web socket function from the deno repository and we're gonna go ahead and just do an export default class web socket manager and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and create a function called connect and this is gonna take in our bot token so before we just had it hard coded in this file over here, but now we're actually going to pass it in to this function. We're going to go ahead and simply do the WebSocket connection. And this, this dot connect method is the same thing as when you do client.login in Discord JS. Not the exact thing, but just think of it of how it works underneath the hood. When you call dot login, it's going to make the initial uh, connection to the gateway and it's going to try to make the handshake. So let's go ahead and just do we try catch and if an error happens we'll just return it and we'll, we'll log in and return it and we're gonna go ahead and just do this dot socket it goes await connect web socket and we're gonna need to pass in the endpoint now obviously right now i'm getting an error because socket is not declared so what i'll probably do is i'll probably just go up here and give socket a type of any i want to give it a type of web socket but i'm not sure if that will let me because when we actually do this let's actually do this so i'm going to go inside constants and i'm going to create some enums so constants.ts and enums are actually really nice to use in typescript they basically allow us to define constants and specific values for them so for example i could do something like gateway and i can give it the value of the gateway url just like that. And we'll need more constants later on too. So now I'll just import constants from constants, constants, just like that. And we have to actually add .ts at the end. Constants.gateway. Okay, now we're actually getting an error over here. It's saying property socket has no initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor. So this is a linting issue. So now we have our WebSocket manager. We're calling connect WebSocket. And if an error happens, it's going to throw an error. Okay, but if everything is successful, then we're going to continue. So we're going to go ahead and do for await const message of this dot socket and this is just going to allow us to listen to all the payloads that are sent from the discord gateway okay so now we're going to parse our payload so json.parse message two string and then we can just console log the payload and we're just going to do some object destructuring so i'm going to go ahead and destructure t s op and d from payload and i might actually create an interface later on so i can type in for the payload uh, object, because we're always gonna get these four properties no matter what. And I'm actually going to rename T because T is actually the name of the event. And you'll see in just a sec when we console log it, I'll rename T as event because that just makes more sense. And we'll get the heartbeat and we don't really need to change the name of that. So we can just get that from D by object destructuring it. Cause remember D has the heartbeat interval. And we're gonna use a switch statement. And what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to define all of our opcodes in our files. Okay, so you can see right over here, there, these are all the opcodes that are available, zero, one, two, three, four. There's no opcode five from what it seems like, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get those opcodes. And I'm gonna put that inside an enum as well. We're just gonna get rid of five though, because there is no five and there's also no 12. So we're gonna get rid of that. 
you don't really want to hard code your values. So it's better practice to put them inside enums or constants. All right, so next we need to provide a case. So we're going to check opcode number 10. Now opcode number 10 basically means we need to send the heartbeat. We need to start sending heartbeats and we need to identify ourselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just declare a variable up here. I'm going to call this interval. For now, I'm going to give it a type of any because we're going to actually return the interval call. But um, I don't want it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to leave it as any forever, though. But we're just going to call a function called heartbeat. And we're going to pass in a heartbeat interval. And we're going to put that function down here. Heartbeats. And we're going to take in a number. And this is just going to return a set interval. And we're going to go ahead and simply do this. I'll have to do a little bit more research on the set interval in Deno. But we're going to just call this.socket.send. And then we need to send the payload member, the same thing that we're doing in the index.ts file, which is doing inside WebSocket Manager. But again, like I said, I want to make my code more modular. I don't want to just hard code stuff everywhere. So instead, I'm going to create a new file and we're going to call this payloads.ts. And this is going to be a file with a bunch of exported objects. And it's going to have all of our payloads. So for example, export const the hello payload. This is where we send opcode number 10 with null. This is the initial payload that we have to send. We have to send the heartbeat. So that as well, opcode one, d null. And then we'll also need the identify payload, opcode two, d, and then the token. We'll set this to empty string for now because we're going to have to modify it later. And then the same thing, Linux or, okay, cool. All right, and now we can import this wherever we want. So I'll just import this out here. So we'll import it from payloads. And we're gonna import hello, heartbeats, and identify. I think that should be it for now. Okay, and now we're simply just gonna go ahead and send this payload now. So inside a heartbeat, we're going to call json.stringify in the dot send, and we're going to stringify a heartbeat. So that's going to send this heartbeat payload over here. We actually don't really need the hello payload. That's what's received, but we can get rid of that. So let me just get rid of that for now. Get rid of that. Okay, so there we go. We are sending the heartbeat. So this is going to keep the connection alive. Getting an error over here. Uh, oh, this dot heartbeat. And once we send that heartbeat, we then need to identify ourselves. So we'll create an async function called identify. And this is going to take in the token. And let's give it a type of string. And we'll call it down over here, this.identify token. And then we'll break. So down here, we're just going to send the token or send the payload identify. So I'm going to reference identify. I'm going to modify the token to whatever token is over here. Because remember, token in our identify payload is an empty string. So we're just going to modify it. And then we're going to call it this.soccer.send, json.stringify, and then identify. And that should be just fine. This is going to return a promise. So we should probably just do something like return. Okay, so now we're done with the initialization. So now we're done with the handshakes and identifying. So assuming that our bot token is correct, we should be good to go. Now let me actually try to run this application real quick. And let's just see what happens. So uh, here's what I'm going to do next. So we've written all of our code so far, we need to actually bring it into uh, our main file. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Go ahead and just comment all this out. So pretend this is just a blank file for now. And let's just go ahead and import WebSocket Manager. So import WebSocket Manager from the source ws.ts. And let's just pretend like this is our client for now. So let's just do const WebSocket equals new WebSocket Manager. Okay, so now I can just call WebSocket.connect. And we're going to go ahead and pass in our token. So let me just grab that real quick. All right. And let's see. Let's also, we can just leave it like this for now. Okay. I think this should be good. I'm going to go ahead and just console log some stuff. 
Actually, I think this should be fine. Yeah, we, we're constantly logging the payload up there, so it's, it should be fine. Okay, so let me go right over into my terminal. And let's do deno run allow net index.ts. And let's see what happens. Uh, socket has no initializer. Okay, so we are still getting that error. So here's what I'm gonna do for now. I'm just gonna let this be any. Okay, so let me just try to run this again. And it should be just fine. Okay, there we go, we have our data, and you can see that my bot is going to be logged in right over here. Bot's logged in, but nothing's happening though. Okay, let me actually try sending some messages. So let's just send a message here, and you can see that we actually have output on our terminal. And let's look at what it says. It says message underscore create. So notice how whenever I send a message on my Discord server, notice how on the terminal, it's emitting an event. So the gateway itself is firing this event, and we are listening to that event from the WebSocket. And you can see right over here, we have message underscore create over for the event name S4 op zero D. So I think what was opcode zero again? Let me double check. Uh, dispatch, an event was dispatched. Okay, so that's what opcode zero uh, is according to the documentation. And then we have D, uh, which is all of the data. So we have type, TTS, timestamp, pinned, uh, nonce, mentions, mention roles. Look at all of this data and pretty much libraries like Discord JS will take all of this data and they don't actually just give you this data right away. They actually take it and they parse it into their own respective file. If you guys aren't aware, Discord J itself is a full on object oriented based library. So all of this JSON object that you see over here is actually taken and then parsed and encapsulated into its own class. Okay. And uh, you can see that if I go ahead and if I, let's just mention my name, uh, we should get another, oh, well, that's strange. Uh, we did get an error though, so I think it's giving us an error somewhere over here because we are, let's see, we're destructuring a property that is null, which is where we're, I guess, here. So I think maybe what we should do instead is what is opcode 11? Let me double check. Opcode 11 sent in response to receiving a heartbeat to acknowledge that it has been received. Okay, so this is a different opcode. So since that opcode itself, okay, I think maybe what we should do is we should only, uh, parse our data whenever we receive opcode zero so that way we can prevent this from prevent this error from happening so here's what i'll do let me go ahead and just save again oh wait let me restart everything okay there we go so blah blah, blah. let's mention myself you can see that the content is right over here uh where are the mentions uh let's see mentions we have that member roles all my roles and etc you can see my username, public flags, ID, discriminator, my avatar. This is all public data that anyone can uh, get if you are on the same Discord server as the bot. So you don't really have to worry so much about hiding it. But yeah, we should definitely check to see what the opcode is before we do any destructuring. So for example, um, you can see right over here, we should get an error soon when we reach opcode number 11. See, yeah, right over here. So we're going to check what the opcode is. So we're going to parse payload. And I think the best thing to do is probably let's just get rid of uh, this real quick. Let's do payload dot op. Okay. And then if it's opcode 10, we will do this. We will destructure all of this stuff over here and we'll do that. Now, if it's opcode 11, we can do something else. We're not going to handle that for now. The only one that we want to care about is the opcode zero. So let's put that up here. So case opcode zero. And we'll just say this. An event was triggered. Okay, and we shouldn't get that error that we're getting, that destructure error. Okay, there we go. So an event was triggered. If we say hello, hello, you can see that we're going to keep getting our event payload data over here the timestamp, TTS type, literally everything. And events are still gonna be triggered and we should probably also check for opcode number, opcode number 11 as well. And what is this over here? I think this was a presence update. And yeah, there are a whole bunch of events that can be triggered. So let's say for example, if I wanna kick someone from my server, so if I kick this guy, 
Notice how, what was it? Guild member remove was omitted. Okay. And what we're going to have to do in order to make sure this library works well is we need to actually use an event emitter to emit certain events and then handle those events. So that's pretty much how Discord JS does it underneath the hood. And we're going to do that in the next video. Okay, so I just want to show you guys how we can kind of like uh, encapsulate everything in its own separate file. So now we can just simply uh, pretend like all of this does not exist, right? Pretend all of this doesn't exist. And pretend this is clients, like pretend this is Discord client. Obviously, we're going to have to create the actual client class later. But let's just pretend that this is our clients, right? And then you would do something like clients. And then change this to login and we can change this method name to login whoops okay and literally it now just looks like your own discord js library and if i control c and if i run it again you're going to see that it literally works the same way okay so hopefully this makes sense and shows you how to actually you know make the discord gateway connection and i really hope this helps you guys out and maybe uh, if you guys do manage to get this far, let me know. I'd, I'd be happy to hear how far you guys can get with building your own uh, library. All right, so I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.